Okay, Michael. There it is. There it is. All of your patience is paying off. So you can see it there. Look at the Really, it's all that needs to be said. Uh, the balance was bad, as I said. Um, the balance was bad, and it, it, it had again some water intrusion, uh, water intrusion issues. So uh, you're so incredibly good lucky that nothing happened to the loom or the dial. I just you're just so lucky. The um, when I pulled off the old crystal, I mean, the amount of filth and gruck and disgusting stuff into there, water tried really, really hard to get into the crystal, but it never did. So that's a huge, huge, huge bonus. That's a gigantic win. Yeah, you can see the numbers that I'm getting. I, I gave you some number previews last night, and obviously we're doing better than that in terms of cruising. So, you know, congratulations. So hang on. Let's... Let's talk about all the things. Let's talk about all the things. Ugh, this stupid thing. There's got to be a better system. I know I got it for free, but... God, stop. All the time. All the time. Okay. So now, let us do this. Let us talk about the things. Oh, firstly, here's this. Uh, this it was just dirty underneath, and I think the seal was pinched, uh, but it's fine. It's fine now. So no issues. Nice and smooth and easy, just the way it ought to be. And there she off she goes. So that's that's good. Um, so here is your watch. And it was fun to do. I was not expecting the water damage uh, inside. It was just, I didn't, because normally when you see water damage, it's going to show up on the, in the loom, but it's not here. I mean, the hands were a little hazy in this area, but that's it. But inside, that was, that was really, that was our problem. Um, oh, I buried the, uh, your escape wheel. Your escape wheel had some corrosion on it. Um, this is your old, this is your bad balance. By the way, that's the old junk balance. Your balance had the tip was broken off the pivot. Uh, this, these are your seals, or what's left of them. Uh, this is the underneath the crystal seal. Uh, it's okay, it's not bad. This is, these 6159s, they use a weird double crystal seal system. The later ones used an L-shaped two-part gasket. They didn't have that here. So you have a crystal that's, a seal that sits into the crystal, and then a seal that's sort of around the crystal underneath the clampdown ring. And that's, this is the one that was underneath the clampdown ring. You can see that came out in pieces. Um, the heck is that? That's not yours at all. Uh, this is your crown seal, such as it is, and you can see that it is, it is just, it is hard as plastic, hard as plastic. I had to chip, and it's broken. I had to chip it out. Um, it really did not want to come out. It had no interest in leaving the case because it had been there for so long. There's your new old stock rotating ring compared to the the old one, which was faded to silver. So you can see that. Isn't that nice? So that's good. Here's your original crystal. You can see this is the kind of gruck that I found underneath that rotating ring. See the rust and corrosion and filth it's really it's it was it was gnarly it took me some time to to address that the watch itself is beautiful beautiful it came out beautifully and obviously once the new balance was in place and the new escape wheel and everything else like that we were just fine the crown screws down firmly you're going to feel more resistance when you're screwing down the crown because the way these this is the first gen crown on these and so the crown instead of the seal being inside the crown the crown is trapped between the case and the seal itself so when you screw it down you're going to feel the seal start to resist a little bit and you're going to have to basically crank it down just be careful when you're screwing these down. You always want to protect these threads because if the threads go bad in the case, oh boy, it's game over. Um, you just don't want to do that. Okay, so other things we were talking about. We were talking about straps. Talking about straps. This is your original waffle strap. There it is right there. 
uh, again, I have seen these break without warning. Uh, the first time I ever heard about one of these breaking without warning, uh, one collector had bought one from another collector, and it had been shipped flat, and by the time it arrived to where it was going, it was in three pieces. They're just, they're, they're old material. They're not designed to live forever. So these are new made reproductions of the three different straps that were, that Seiko made at that time. This is the standard waffle. And I mean, you can see the, the, you can see the quality. You can see it. I mean, it's, it's a well, very well made piece, far more dependable. This is the so-called 731 strap. This strap was only ever fitted to the 6159 period. That is the strap that it came on. Uh, and an unusual strap, you want, it's a genuine strap, not genuine, but I mean Seiko made this model, this is aftermarket, is the chocolate bar strap, which I actually, I think is really cool. Um, and people don't see these very often. Um, so it's really, it's up to you. If you want to go for the standard waffle, which was more of a 6105 strap, if you want to try the 731 strap, or if you want to go nutty and get the chocolate bar. Um, I don't know. That's about it. You tell me what you want done, and we'll get it done for you. But your watch is ready to wear. Ready to wear. Nice piece. Nice piece. All original. Beautiful piece. Heirloom quality. Very nice. Oh, and of course, I'm extremely proud um, uh, for fishing out this stoplight, pink stoplight hand here. I fished it out off the dial and I got it seated back in and I went over the underside of the, dot, uh, the hand with a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of binder, uh, which is a, a clear glue, uh, which is used in looming and it's, it's solid in there. And I did actually both. I did the underside of both parts of the, of the sweep hand so that they would stay the way they needed to be. That's it. All right, Michael, thank you so much.